Hi, Bobcats. In this video, we'll extend our applications of intermolecular forces. We talked on a previous slide about how strong intermolecular forces will um, make a molecule have a high melting point, a high boiling point, a high viscosity. Um, in this section, we're going to explain why one thing dissolves in another thing in terms of those intermolecular forces. Some substances easily dissolve in one another, whereas other substances just won't mix. So for instance, the image on the left is showing uh, something that you might see at a salad bar where you have oil and vinegar. And even if you shake those up really good and they appear briefly to be mixed, if you let it sit for any length of time, it immediately separates back out into an oil phase and a water-based phase because vinegar is a little bit of acetic acid dissolved in water. But other things mix really easily and will stay mixed, such as if you put oil into gasoline, which is something that you'll do for uh, the gas powered weed eaters and other lawn equipment. So why will oil and gasoline mix really easily, but oil and water won't? Well, we'll answer that in terms of intermolecular forces. The first step in answering that is to take a look at what happens with intermolecular forces when something dissolves in a solvent. And this illustration is showing what happens when an ionic substance, which has permanent full plus and minus charges, something like sodium chloride, dissolves up in water. And what will happen is as these water molecules, like this one down here, approach the crystal, notice how the positive hydrogen end of the water molecule is approaching the negative chloride ion. And if a bunch of water molecules all approach that chloride ion and start tugging on it, soon they have enough strength to pull it away from the rest of the crystal. And the dissolved chloride ion ends up surrounded by water molecules that are all pointing that positive hydrogen end at it. The opposite thing happens with the positive sodium ions, which is illustrated up here at the top. And once the negative end of the water molecules start tugging enough or enough uh, water molecules pull against that positive sodium ion, it'll separate and dissolve. And we end up with a dissolved sodium ion that looks something like that, where we have the positive ion in the middle and then the negative end of all of those water molecules are pointed towards it. There's a video down here at the bottom uh, if you'd pause my video and go watch that for just a moment, it illustrates this happening and it shows how those polar water molecules interact with the charged ionic substance. The catchphrase for scientists when talking about solubility is like dissolves like, which people who study English probably don't like the grammar on that very much, but uh, what we mean um, is that intermolecular forces need to be similar uh, between the solute, the thing that's getting dissolved, and the solvent, what dissolves up the solute, um, in order for a substance to dissolve. And when we talk about this similarity, specifically what we're talking about is charges. If you have permanent charges on your molecules, they will dissolve in any solvent that has permanent charges. But if you have no permanent charges on your molecule, then they will only dissolve in solvents that have no permanent charges. So the easiest way to think about that is in terms of intermolecular forces. The intermolecular forces that have permanent charges are hydrogen bonding and dipole-dipole and also, even though we talk about it as bonding, many of the solutes that will dissolve in hydrogen bonded or dipole-dipole solvents are going to be ionically bonded. So it's something like sodium chloride, where there's a metal plus a metal. So all of those things freely dissolve in one another, ionic substances, dipole-dipole substances, and hydrogen bonded substances. The odd man out is London dispersion forces. And um, if you have a solvent that only has London dispersion forces, such as benzene, it will only dissolve things that also only have London dispersion forces. So what does a problem on a homework, a quiz, or a test look like on this topic? 
Well, we'll try to predict um, which one of the compounds in the second column is most likely to dissolve in the solvent that's listed in the first column. So we need to look at the intermolecular forces involved in all of these. So in our first solvent, methanol, well, methanol has this OH group in it, which means it's going to be able to do hydrogen bonding. So we are looking for a compound to dissolve in it that either has hydrogen bonding, um, dipole-dipole, or is ionic. And so if we look at the two compounds we're asked to consider, well, water is one that we've already looked at, and it has a hydrogen attached to an oxygen, so it's capable of doing hydrogen bonding. Methane, CH4, is a nonpolar molecule, so its dominant, London dis its dominant intermolecular force is London dispersion forces. So we say like dissolves like. So our hydrogen compound, hydrogen bonded compound water, will dissolve in our hydrogen bonded solvent methanol. So the best choice here is water. Now for our second case, um, water is hydrogen bonded as our solvent. And so we need to consider our two solutes, CCl4. Uh, I'm going to draw this in the upper right corner. If we look at the Lewis structure for CCl4, and I'm omitting all of the lone pairs on the chlorine, um, that central carbon atom is bonded to four identical things. And so it's a perfectly symmetric molecule, which means that it's nonpolar. So CCl4's dominant intermolecular force will be London dispersion forces. And when we look at ammonia, ammonia has a nitrogen that's bonded to hydrogen, which means that it can do hydrogen bonding. So when we try to decide which one of these molecules is more likely um, or will dissolve best in water, we're trying to match the intermolecular forces. And so the hydrogen bonding in water um, matches the hydrogen bonding in ammonia. So ammonia will dissolve best. We could also expand this question. Um, instead of giving you something else that was hydrogen bonded, I might have given you something that was dipole-dipole, um, such as um, uh, something like uh, uh, CH2Cl2. Uh, that the dominant intermolecular force here will be dipole-dipole. And so, given the choices, uh, CH2Cl2 um, will dissolve best in water. Um, but if memory serves, even so, it doesn't dissolve very much, but it will dissolve better than CCL4 will. Here's another example question. It's asking, which subs in which substance will butane have the highest solubility? So once again, we need to compare intermolecular forces. Um, our four answer choices are things that are commonly used as solvents, water, chloromethane, acetone, and cyclohexane. Water, we already know from that last example and some previous ones, is a hydrogen bonded substance. Then CH3Cl, that's the molecule illustrated down below on the left. Um, it does not have hydrogens bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, so it's not hydrogen bonded. It is a polar molecule because that central carbon, while it has four single bonds, they're not all to the exact same other element. So this one is going to be dipole-dipole because it's a uh, polar molecule. And I'm just going to abbreviate that this way so it looks like dip-dip for dipole-dipole. Uh, I'm just going to call it DD up top here. Uh, acetone is this molecule that's in the top drawing, and um, notice this center uh, C double bond O group. Um, that's different than the CC bonds on either side, so that's going to also make this one dipole-dipole. The molecule down below is 
cyclohexane. Uh, it's hexane because there are six hydrogen atoms, and it's cyclo because they all um, the the chain closes back on itself to make a ring. That's where the cyclo part of that comes from. This molecule is completely nonpolar. We treat all carbon-carbon bonds as nonpolar and all carbon-hydrogen bonds as nonpolar. So being nonpolar makes this molecule have London dispersion forces for its strongest intermolecular forces. So now we've identified the intermolecular forces in all of our four answer choices. We need to identify what intermolecular force is present in butane. Well, butane is our four carbon alkane. So we have four carbons all connected to one another, and the rest of these bonds are filled out with hydrogens because each carbon needs to have four bonds. Um, because this molecule has only carbon and hydrogen, it's considered completely nonpolar. And so London dispersion forces will be uh, the dominant intermolecular force in butane. So the phrase is like dissolves like. We want to match up these um, intermolecular forces. So London dispersion forces in cyclohexane will be able to dissolve up the London dispersion forces that are present in butane. So cyclohexane is the best choice for this question. Our objective for this video was to use intermolecular forces to explain why a solute will dissolve in, in a solvent. And our catchphrase here was like dissolves like. And so we just want to um, double check on our intermolecular forces. If something has London dispersion forces, it will only dissolve in other things um, that have London dispersion forces. However, our two other um, intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonding and dipole-dipole, um, all have permanent charges on them. And so um, something that has dipole-dipole forces will dissolve in the solvent that's hydrogen bonding. And we can also throw in ionic solutes into this, things like sodium chloride. And so if something has hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole forces, or it's an ionic substance, these things will all dissolve in one another. All right, eat them up, Bobcats.